So we're starting to get the system prepped for the first firing. I've uh, taken the lid off, pulled the gasket out because these aren't glued in from the factory. We got some 3M spray adhesive in there, got that glued in. We got a skiff coat of grease around the top to make sure the gasket doesn't stick on there because there will be tar that forms on the top of the hopper. Uh, and we don't want the gasket getting torn or, or stuck down. So a little grease there, glued that guy in. Pretty much the last thing we need before we fire the system off, you can see at the bottom where the grate is, there's no restriction. Well, there is. It's the choke plate flange hanging around the edge there. But we need to choke the fire down into a smaller area, force it into hot charcoal, make sure we don't get any oxygen passing through there, or for that matter, any tar, try to get as much water out as we can in the hopper. We gotta force that fire down into a small area, get it good and hot. So we need a restriction that sits in the bottom. Now, Wayne's truck, I believe he's running a nine inch restriction. He always recommends start smaller than you think you need. And as you learn the truck, you can go up quite a bit bigger. Um, so if he's running the nine, I'm gonna start in this truck with an eight. So really easy way to do this is if you got a pile of old brake rotors and drums laying around, they're cast, but they make a really good restriction. So I got this one here. She's a, a little character. Uh, it's, it's been modified. Definitely doesn't look like a uh, dull apprentice went at it with a portable bandsaw. We're gonna drop this guy in, and once we get the truck home, around the outside edge of this, we're gonna form a cone using ash. That's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna lock the restriction in place, keep it from moving around. That way all the charcoal can sit right on top and the charcoal can funnel down into the restriction in that choke point. So let's get that guy dropped in there real quick. And this is one thing I was worried about. Maybe I can find a thinner spot. Oh, there we go. And pretty much just gonna give her the old flip. Oh, might have to get a something and poke it down past the, the nozzles. There, there we go. Now the restriction's sitting down in place, and we'll fill that void in around the outside edge with uh, ash when we get home. Get ready to fire this thing up. Definitely covered my brand new sweatshirt in grease because this is a very small lid opening. Um, I don't expect this lid to last very long, being 24 gauge. Just gonna keep my eye out. I wanna find a 30 gallon drum lid to go on here. Number one, much bigger opening, easier to get the bag in there, easier to get the wood in. Number two, uh, much thicker material. It's gonna last a lot longer. I think Wayne's getting like between two and six years out of a lid. I don't think this guy's gonna last maybe a year or so, but it's what I got. I need to get the system running. Midterm elections are next week and I expect gas prices to be uh, and if you're wondering how the wood drying operation is going, there's 41 bags right there. This wood is down between 9 and 10% moisture. It's ready to get bagged up today. There's probably another 25 bags there, plus about oh, 30 bags I got home. I got about a month and a half where the fuel saved up. And it's the perfect time of year, <laughs> Pacific Northwest. Oh, I'll just be quiet. Can you hear it? The rain is just hammering down. So we're gonna have to keep up on the wood operation once this guy is uh, fired up, running, driving. And then as soon as this one's going, and we got that motor, it's gotta go into the Toyota. Uh, that one's just, you know, I, I did a video on it. Got it all slapped back together. It does have a Delta RV cam in it, new lifters. Cross the fingers that those work out because all across the industry it's been lifter failure after lifter failure after lifter failure uh cam hardness failures you know the the aftermarket is just junk right now but that guy needs to go in decided i'm not going to use that two barrel intake i'm having way more fun with that truck on four barrels but that one's got to go in asap but we need to get this thing fired now to prep the hay filter we don't want the laundry bags full of hay sitting right on the pipes because that'll just kind of smother and choke them off we need to hold them bags up the ways and then let the gas get out of those pipes, disperse, and then work its way through the hay coming up to the top to get into these two. So, half of a five gallon bucket, cheese whiz full of holes. 
one hand this thing down, around, and in, like that. Over the top of the pipes, centered up. Now we're ready for the hay folder bags to get dropped in. Then we'll throw the lid on this guy. I think that's all the prep. Got our restriction in. Lids are greased. Hay filter. Yeah, we just need some laundry bags. We're ready to fire this. Almost forgot. One last thing we gotta do. Well, I'll even put the cup holder back in. On these gauges, you've got this little titty right here. You gotta snip that guy off so the vacuum gauge can breathe. I don't need these for test firing the system, but I do need them once it's running and drying. Because then we'll be able to tell the health of our char bed between hopper vacuum and rails vacuum. That tells us how tight the restriction point is that we just put in. If the restriction gets too tight, we know that we either need to add bigger wood so that she can breathe better or give it a great shake. Or if it's running too loose and there's a vacuum ratio you want to see uh, between two and a half and three and a half to one is pretty ideal. If you're running too tight, you're going to see higher vacuum ratio. We'll see like four, five, six to one, or in like my Toyota, I've seen it all the way up 20 to one before because that thing has some issues I need to fix, but we'll get around to that. And then low vacuum ratio, if you end up like, well, anything less than two to one, you want to tighten the char bed back up. And there's two ways you can do that. You can put in smaller wood, which will make small charcoal and kind of clog things up or you can add in straight charcoal and uh, that'll help too. And if you mix wood with charcoal, then you get rocket fuel. Thanks to my buddy Bob for uh, making up that one. I use it in the Toyota all the time. Warms the truck up quicker and it makes better power. Um, typically, your bottom half of the hopper, you're gonna make the best power, but if you run uh, the rocket fuel, you can get really good power on a full hopper. I think that's it. I think it is uh, ready to fire, other than I gotta go tonight to the feed store, get a bale of hay so I can fill up the hay filter, and uh, yeah, that will be the next video. That, I believe that is final prep. All the gauges are functioning. I did accidentally cut the wires for that one when I was running the plumbing with my tin snips. I got that fixed. These guys are ready to go. I, I think we're ready. I think the next video we're gonna see this thing making some wood gas. And barring any issues, you know, getting the char bed settled in, hopefully not having any leaks or anything. It's raining in my shop. I'm getting wet. Told you guys the wind, the, it's just hammering rain out there. Barring any other issues, that cap and that cap will be off. Hopefully we'll see some nice big flames coming out right the back of this truck. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys very soon.